This is the DSR and DSR stands for dynamic stereometer. Uh, what it does is uh, it basically calculates the complex shear modulus and the uh, phase angle for bitumen and it applies a torsional shear to the binder specimen which is kept between the spindles between a fixed and a movable plate. The fixed plate is at the bottom and the movable plate is at the top this one and um, in this case we are going to show you a uh, control stress test and we are going to test with a original binder specimen which is not aged by either of pressurizing vessel or by RTFO and in this demo we will be also showing only the high temperature uh, grading of the binder not the low temperature one. For the low temperature one there the only difference is like you need to follow the same set of steps but you need to change the movable, movable plate to a plate with a much smaller diameter like this which is like only 8 millimeters I guess. So how is this uh, test done? Firstly we have a temperature bath over here which is basically to maintain the temperature of the water at a given particular temperature and this water is circulated through the pipes coming from the back and it comes over here. Uh, then the specimen, the binder specimen looks something like this when we like we pour the hot binder in a set of molds and we then put it in the freezer so that it freezes and becomes a little hard so that it, it is easy to peel off from the mold like this and after that we put the binder between the two plates and squish it. Since the amount of binder that we put is a little more what we need to do is to trim off the extra amount of the binder. So in order to trim the specimen we first need to heat the this particular spatula so that it is much more easier to take off the binder. So I first heat it and then trim the excess and having done that the next step will be to put the binder below the water, surf water surface. In order to do that I need to take these two pieces and put it right over here so that the water starts to flow on top of the binder specimen. This way we can ensure that the, the binder and the water is being maintained at a constant temperature because the water is being maintained at a constant temperature by the water bath. So we are going to allow a 10, 10 minute equilibration time so that the water and the binder comes to the same temperature within those 10 minutes and then we start testing the complex shear modulus and the phase angle for the binder. Before we can actually start it we need to take this safety clamp off and now we are set to pretty much set to run the temperature uh, run the test. So in order to do that there is a button called start measure but before I start the test I would like to show you some of the options that you can control on this particular software like firstly like the temperature at which we should start the test like by default it is 64 but we can go as low as 46 and as high as 88. Then for the stress amplitude the default is 120 and the minimum is 90 and the maximum is 150 and it goes like that. Some of the important things that we want to mention over here is the gap and for super wave the default is 1 millimeter uh, between the movable and the fixed plate and also the pass fail criteria. By the pass fail criteria I mean like for the high, high temperature binder grading uh, the G star over sine delta has to be at least 1000 pascals which is, which is shown over here. We can change that but the super wave, super wave specification suggest this particular value and this is pretty much everything about original binder testing. We have separate specifications for RTFO as well as PAV 
and over here we can mention like what kind of specimen we are going to use are we going to use the 25 millimeter specimen or are we going to use the 8 millimeter specimen so since i am running a 25 millimeter specimen i mentioned pp25 dsr the gap uh, we can change it but since i have there a 1 millimeter gap so i have i have here 1, one millimeter and if somebody wants to increase the temperature, the starting temperature, he can go here and start bumping up the temperature. He can start from 52, 58, 64, whatever he wants. And um, okay, and the thermal equilibrium time that I was telling you earlier, that the, the, the time gap that we allow for the water and the binder to come to the same temperature, that is mentioned over here. Instead of mentioning giving 10 minutes, you can give 5 minutes or you can give 15 minutes. The lower you go, there is less chance that the binder and the water may be at the same temperature. 10, minim 10, 10 minutes is a standard value and that is good enough. So having done all this, then we do, we start, we start the temperature, we start the test and now the test is started. It will wait for, it will wait for 600 seconds and after that it will start measuring the g star and the delta value and then it will automatically compute the g star over sine delta so right now it's applying the torque over there and this is how the results finally look like at 46 degrees Celsius, the G star was sine delta was 9.47 kilopascals. Like the G, uh, only the G star was 9.33 kilopascals, and the delta was delta was uh, 80.2 degrees. Okay, so it, it automatically computes the G star was sine delta and reports here. Since this value is higher than one kilopascal, it will now bump up the temperature. And as you can see over here, it's now going to the next temperature, which is which is 52 degrees Celsius. Like it's now 46.44, and you can see over there also, both the temperatures are going towards 52 degrees Celsius. So it will continue doing like this. And I have the results for this particular binder from a test that I have performed earlier. And as you can see, in this case, it was 9.36 at 46 degrees Celsius, then 3.73 at 52 degrees Celsius, and at 58 degrees Celsius, it was 1.64, and at 64 degrees Celsius, it was 0 0.766. At this point, it went below 1 kilopascal, and it stopped the test. It determined the true grade of the binder, which was 61.91, and since PG58, uh, since 58 degrees Celsius, was the last temperature where the G star was sine delta was still higher than one kilopascal. The binder grade, the grade of the, the high temperature grade of the binder is a PG58, so which you can see over here. So it is going to do the same set of steps for this particular binder till it goes less than one kilopascal. The steps will be pretty much the same for a rolling thin film oven test or uh, uh, for, will be the same for a sample that is aged with the rolling thin film oven or the pressurizing vessel only in those cases this spec like the 1 kilopascal requirement will be different it may not be 1 kilopascal it will be something higher and you can pretty much also see what is the requirement in case of rolling thin film it will be 2.2 kilopascals and in case of pressurizing vessel it will be a sample which is aged with the pressurizing vessel will be 5 into 10 to the power 6 pascals which is 5000 kilopascals I guess. So the only thing that will be different will be the requirement for the pass fail criteria will just change. Other than that everything else will be the same.